we will now talk about the concept of risk aversion utility theory and indifference curves and then the application of utility theory to portfolio selection let's start with the concept of risk aversion risk aversion refers to the behavior of investors of preferring less risk to more risk in other words for a rational investor if two investment options exist a and b both offer the same return then all else equal the investor will prefer the option that offers lower risk in this particular case let's say option a or investment a has relatively low risk and option b has relatively high risk then a normal risk averse investor would prefer investment a over b even though a and b have the same expected return when we say high risk aversion this is the same as saying low risk tolerance a normal investor is risk averse which is what we talked about but there can be other profiles a risk neutral investor doesn't care about risk in other words for a risk neutral investor investment a and b would be the same a risk seeking investor actually prefers more risk to less risk all else equal let us quantify this concept now we will talk about utility theory and indifference curves we can measure the utility of an investment to a particular investor using this formula the utility is equal to the expected return minus half of a a is a measure of risk aversion times sigma squared this is a measure of the risk of the investment if you look at this formula carefully the utility of a particular investment will be high if the expected return from that investment is high that makes sense and then we have a negative sign before i come to the risk aversion which is investor specific i'll look at the risk over here if the risk is high then because of that negative the utility comes down for a investor with a high degree of risk aversion where a would then be a relatively high number then a given level of risk is multiplied by this high risk aversion so the overall impact would be more negative as a word of caution when you use this formula use only decimals so if you are given an expected return number in percent you need to convert that to decimal standard deviation also should be converted into decimal let's do a simple exercise an investor has a risk aversion of 2 that's what you will plug over here in the real world these numbers are difficult to come up with but in the exam world this will be given to you so that's how we will operate the investor has risk aversion equal to 2 and owns a risk free asset returning 5% what is the utility all we need to do is plug into this formula the utility of a uh, investment is equal to the expected return 5% and remember we need to use decimal so you do 0.05 minus half of a which is 2 but then it's risk free for a risk free investment the risk or the sigma is 0 so minus 0 the answer therefore is 0.05 if i were to plot this over here i'd say at a risk of 0 the utility is 0.05 this investor is considering an asset with sigma equal to 10% so this is a risky asset at what level of return will he have the same utility we have already established the utility the utility is 0.05 so you can say 0.05 is equal to the expected return which is what we are trying to compute let's say that is x minus half of a which is 2 multiplied by sigma squared that's given and we need to work in decimal so we do 0.1 squared 
we solve for x and we get 0 0.06. What this means is that at a risk of 10% or 0 0.1, the investor will be equally happy as long as he gets a return of 0 0.06. So that would be this point over here. And if you think about it, this makes sense. He had a certain level of happiness at this point. That level of happiness measured by the utility is 0 0.05. With this higher risk investment, to remain equally happy, he needs a higher return. That higher return is 6%. The line which connects all these points where the investor is equally happy is called a indifference curve. This is the indifference curve for the investor where the level of utility is 0 0.05. The indifference curve or one particular indifference curve tells us the different risk and return numbers at which the investor is equally happy. The indifference curve is a graphical depiction of the utility function. Next question. Given a choice between a risk-free asset and a stock with an expected return of 10% and sigma equal to 2, what will he prefer? What you need to do is compute the utility for this investment. The utility is equal to the expected return, which is 0 0.1 minus half times the risk aversion which is 2 multiplied by sigma squared which in this case is 0 0.2 squared. If we calculate this we get 0 0.06. This utility number is higher than the utility of 0 0.05 which means that the investor will be happier with this option. If we are to put this on a picture over here at a standard deviation of 0.2, the utility is 0 0.6. With this investment, we have an expected return of 10%, sigma equal to 20. So it will plot over here. Notice that this point is above the original indifference curve. And Clearly, the investor is going to be happier on this curve because the utility is 0 0.06, which we calculated over here. That is greater than the original utility of 0 0.05. Notice that the indifference curves will generally point northeast because to remain equally happy, additional risk needs to be compensated with higher returns. Another point is that as indifference curves move northwest, the investor is happier. So those are the main points related to indifference curves for a given investor. Key point is to remember this formula and remember to do calculations in decimals. Now let's look at the indifference curves for various types of investors. Here again is the utility function. The utility is the expected return minus half times A, which is the risk aversion, times sigma squared. We have expected return on the y-axis, risk or standard deviation on the x. For somebody who is risk neutral, the utility is the same regardless of the level of risk. Because he is risk neutral, he doesn't care about risk. For a risk-averse investor, the utility functions will look like this. Because for a risk-averse investor, when he takes more risk, he needs to be compensated with more return. So this is the indifference curve for a risk-averse investor. What about a risk-seeking investor? For him, the indifference curves will look like this, where he likes more risk. So to be equally happy with more risk, he is willing to live with a lower return. This is not a normal scenario. Coming back to risk averse, most investors are risk averse and finance theory assumes 
that investors are risk averse, but the degree of risk aversion can vary. Let's say that this particular investor has a risk aversion equal to 2. What if we have another investor who has a risk aversion equal to 3? We will use a different color for him. Here the risk aversion is higher, so the indifference curve will be steeper. Since this person is more risk averse, to take on a certain amount of risk, he needs to get a higher compensation in terms of greater return. That is why if the risk aversion is higher, the indifference curve is going to be steeper. If you have another investor who is not very risk averse, for him the indifference curve will be less steep. We will now look at the application of utility theory to portfolio selection. Consider a simple portfolio of a risk-free asset and a risky asset. Plot the expected return of the portfolio against the risk of the portfolio for different weights of the two assets. So here is our portfolio. We have the risk-free asset. Let's say this is asset 1 and a risky asset. Let's say that is asset 2. The risk-free rate is 5%. Since this is risk-free, the risk is 0. For our risky asset, we have a return of 10% and a risk of 20%. What is the expected return of the portfolio? The expected return is simply a weighted average. If we have 100% weight put in the risk-free asset, then the return of the portfolio will be 5%. If we have 100% weight in the risky asset, then the return will be 10%. If we put a 50-50 weight, then the return will be an average of these two, which is 7.5%. You have done this several times. What about the risk of the overall portfolio? Here is a formula that you should be familiar with by now. The risk of a portfolio is given by this expression, but notice Given that sigma is 0 for asset 1, this expression becomes a lot simpler. Sigma is 1, so this becomes 0, and this expression becomes 0 for two reasons. The sigma 1 is 0 plus the correlation is also 0 because the correlation of any asset with the risk-free asset is 0. In other words, the risk of the portfolio is given by the square root of W2, which is our risky asset, weight of the risky asset times sigma 2 squared. When you take the square root, you are simply left with W2 times sigma 2. And as we've said, the expected return of the portfolio is simply the weighted average of the returns of the two assets. Now we are asked to plot the expected return for different weights of the two assets. Here is what you should get. If W2 is 0, that means you have 0 weight in the risky asset and all your weight in the risk-free asset, then the return is simply 5% and the risk is 0. That's this point over here. As you move to the right, you put more weight in the risky asset. Let's say the weightage in the risky asset is 0.25. The return on the portfolio, the risk on the portfolio is going to be 0.25 into sigma 2, that's 0.25 into 20, which is 5%. So as you move to a weightage of 0.25 in the risky asset, the risk becomes 5% and the return is 6.25%. As you plug in more numbers, let's just take this one over here, 0.5 weightage in the risky asset. The risk of the portfolio is 10%. So we are at this point with the expected return of 7.5%. When you plot this out, you notice that you simply have this straight line over here. As you are moving northeast on this line, the weightage of the risky asset is increasing. At this point, you are 100% invested in the risky asset. The return will be 10% and the risk will be 20%. Let us now derive the formula of this line. 
If you remember your basic high school maths, the equation for a straight line is given by y is equal to mx plus c, where m is the slope and c is the intercept on the y-axis. If you think about this line, the y-axis is your ri. This is equal to the slope. The slope is the change in y, which is ri minus rf divided by the change in x, which is simply sigma i. So ri minus rf over sigma i, this is your slope, multiplied by the x-axis, which is sigma i, plus the intercept. The intercept is the risk-free rate. So this represents the equation of the line that we just created. And that line is called the capital allocation line. Here we have created a capital allocation line with just two assets, the risk-free asset and a risky asset. Later, we will create a capital allocation line with more assets. Assuming the investor just has access to the two assets that we talked about, the risk-free asset, which gives a return of 5%, and the risky asset which gives a return of 10% and has a standard deviation of 20%. So he only has access to these two assets. What is the optimal portfolio? The optimal portfolio will lie somewhere along this line. If he wants to be extremely risk averse, he can go with the risk-free asset which will give him 5%. At the other end of the spectrum, he can go 100% with the risky asset that will give him 10% but at a high risk. Or he could pick a portfolio somewhere on this line depending on the relative weightage of the risk-free asset and the risky asset. So the question is where will he be the happiest? The answer is that this depends on his indifference curves. Given the investor's risk aversion number, we draw the indifference curves. And let's say that for this particular investor, the indifference curves look like this. As we've discussed before, the indifference curves will move northeast. The steepness will depend on the risk aversion coefficient. And just to add one more point, the way this theory works, the indifference curves cannot intersect. And as we have discussed, moving northwest makes the investor happier. So the portfolio that is optimal is this one right here. It is the portfolio that will make the investor the happiest because this is the only possible portfolio with those two assets that is actually touching this indifference line. So we find the highest possible, by highest we mean most northwest. So the highest possible indifference line, we look at where that is tangential with the capital allocation line. And the tangent point represents the optimal portfolio for our investor. Let's say we have another investor who has a higher level of risk aversion. Where will his optimal portfolio lie? There are two ways of looking at this. With a higher risk aversion level, the lines or the indifference lines will be even more steep. So if these are even more steep, then the tangential point or the tangent point will be closer to the risk-free asset. So the answer is we will be to the left of this point. The other way of looking at it is if an investor is more risk averse, then it naturally makes sense for him to be closer to the risk-free asset. In other words, it makes sense for him to have a higher weightage in the risk-free asset. 